Hi, and welcome to Time Management Interventions and Accommodations for People with ADHD. Time management is a big struggle for children with ADHD. ADHD creates a blindness to time or nearsightedness to the future. This means that your child with ADHD can only deal with things near in time and they have difficulty planning ahead. Many adults with ADHD also struggle with understanding and using their time well. So no matter how hard you or your child try, you may find it difficult to calculate how long things will take or you procrastinate until the last minute. Sometimes it might feel like you're stuck on a carousel of frustration and disappointment with no way off. So now let's talk about how the brain with ADHD impacts time management. Dopamine is a key neurotransmitter or chemical messenger in the brain that drives reward and pleasure in humans. Basically, it makes you feel good. It also helps your mind to recognize a reward and wants to find a way to reach the reward. For you and your child, all motivation is external because you have lower levels of dopamine in your brain. There has to be something in it for you or your child to persist. So when you think about time management, you have to build a reward system to remain motivated to complete each task. The learning environment places intense demands on executive function skills, particularly in the areas of time management, planning, and organization, as well as other critical learning processes, such as memory, attention, and emotional control. So, since your child's executive functioning is impaired, it explains why she may struggle with time management. The symptoms of ADHD can create challenges for you at home and in the workplace as well. Managing complex or long-term projects may be the hardest organizational challenge for adults with ADHD. The brain can be divided into two pieces. The back part is where you acquire knowledge and the front part is where you use it. It doesn't matter what you know, you won't use it. It's not just about time management. ADHD is not a disorder of not knowing what to do. It's using what you and your child know that ADHD robs you of. You and your child live in the moment. It doesn't matter what your plans were, what your goals were, the now is more compelling than the information that you need to remember and you get pulled along by the now. The further out the event lies, the less you or your child are capable of dealing with it. This is why things are often left to the last minute. So your lives may be a series of one crisis after another, all of which were avoidable because other people prepared and you didn't. So now let's talk about time management interventions and accommodations for ADHD. Interventions are used to teach the skills needed to improve a specific area of weakness. Once those skills are gained, interventions typically end. Accommodations allow you and your child to get around a specific barrier or challenge. By changing the environment, you're helping to compensate for you and your child's impaired executive abilities. You and your child cannot hold things in mind and trying to force yourself or your child to do so just won't work. You and your child must use external tools to make up for your challenges. While medication may improve symptoms, teachers and parents can also play an important role in helping by incorporating time management interventions and accommodations. Learning to manage time involves more than applying great tools. It also depends on understanding how ADHD impacts executive function skills and taking into account that children with ADHD are typically 30% behind in executive age than children the same chronological age. So let's talk about some tips or tools. 
As you go through this process, keep in mind that you're learning about and establishing lifelong strategies, since for most people with ADHD, it's a chronic disorder. Your goal moving forward is to learn about these interventions and accommodations and to make external changes in your environment to compensate for you and your child's impaired executive abilities. Keep in mind that performing time management is so that you and your child can balance multiple priorities. The tools that you choose to use should help you and your child and not be overwhelming. You should also work with your child's teachers to include the accommodations and interventions that you find that are helpful in his or her education plan. So let's get started on discussing the various external tools and strategies that you can choose from to manage time better. The first one is to carry a small pocket journal or use your notes feature on your phone or use a digital recorder. You or your child shouldn't go anywhere without it. Anything you or your child agree to do or others ask you to do should be written down immediately. That's gonna be your working memory. Some apps that you can use are Google Keep Notes, Microsoft OneNote, Apple Notes, or Samsung Notes. You can also create a checklist and reminders on your phone based on what you or your child has been asked to do. The next strategy is to use sticky notes effectively to remind yourself of what you need to do. The advantage of using sticky notes on calendars and planners is that if plans change, they can be easily moved and rearranged. So here are some suggestions on how to use them for time management. You don't have to use all of these ideas, but here are some suggestions. And remember, you want to encourage preteens and teens to organize their own calendar, including chores, homework, and activities. And they can use the suggestions that I'm making to map everything out in order of importance to help prioritize and set their deadlines. So use small sticky notes in a planner in the week at a glance section to plan the week, the little tiny square ones. First, you have your child write down what needs to be done and then have her put it in the schedule for when it should be completed. Don't forget to include quizzes and tests and you can plan out a weekly homework and studying schedule. Again, by using those little tiny square post-it notes, Items can be easily rearranged if things need to change. The next thing you can do is use lined sticky notes to break down topics that need to be studied for an upcoming exam and put it in a planner. And maybe put check boxes next to each item to mark off so that you know when things have been completed and be sure to put deadlines so that you know when items are due. The next strategy is to use routines. As discussed in our previous lessons on routines and organization, establish routines that introduce checklists that you can use to accomplish goals. For example, a daily homework checklist or office organization checklist. The next tip is to use timers or timed checklists. People with ADHD don't have an internal clock, so if anything involves time, there must be a timer. There must be something physical that signals the passage of time. Task timers can help you get better at judging how much time each task will take and let you or your child know when it's time to move on to something new. Timers aren't just for helping with homework and chores. Your son can also use one during longer tests to remind him to switch sections and use his time efficiently. For timed checklists, um, you can list things that you need to get done each day with a time limit. So you can use post-it notes as we discussed earlier, or just simply write a list on a piece of paper. After creating the list, set a timer to stay focused and on task. So here are some timer options aside from the standard kitchen, liquid, or sand timers that might guide you in the right direction to find the right fit for you and your family. The first one is the time timer. 
It's a helpful visual timer that can be used in any setting. The timer is set for the amount of time you choose and starts as a solid red color. As time goes by, the red starts to go away. It's a clear visual of how much time you have left to work with. Time Timer has clocks, watches, and apps available on their website at timetimer.com. The Pomodoro technique has you focus on a set task for 25 minutes. Then you take a five minute break and repeat. The Pomodoro website is full of information on how to make this technique work for you. And you can purchase the book and tomato timer to put it into practice at home or at work. And finally, the Zen timer is an app you can buy for your Apple devices. It's a beautiful tree on your computer that you get to see mature throughout the time that you have set. And as it gets closer to the end, you slowly see the tree lose its leaves. And finally, a phone alarm is by far the most common way people use alarms and timers. People use phone timers not only to manage time, but to remember daily tasks like taking medication or picking up their kids from school. The next accommodation that you can use in the classroom is to utilize classmates and teacher's aides. Ask your child's teacher to pair your child with a positive role model that can help him to remember to write down tasks and complete an end of school day checklist. The next tool or strategy is to take pictures. If an assignment is written down, take a picture of the assignment and attach it to a calendar and set a reminder. And if it's for you in your professional life, do that with um, meeting notes. The next tip is to get the medication right. If your child is on medication and your child's medications aren't effective in helping her to focus, work with your doctor to get the medication right. When your child can focus, they can complete tasks more quickly and they'll be less frustrated. The next tip is to use rewards. Keep your child and yourself motivated by rewarding yourself immediately. Reward yourself by taking a walk, making a hot beverage, meditating, or just taking a few minutes to take some deep breaths. Look out the window and relax. Reward your child with 15 minutes of TV, iPad time, or just dancing to get the wiggles out. Then get back on schedule. So now we're going to talk about managing calendars effectively. Managing a calendar can be difficult, but especially if you're someone with ADHD. If your school doesn't provide a printed one, you can find them on Amazon. If your child prefers to manage things online, there are plenty of apps available that can be synced with other devices. Whatever method you and your child prefer, there are some basic principles that you can suggest to your child that they use. In the beginning, you'll want to help your child with this. And then as they gain experience, they can practice these skills on their own. The first one is to capture all of your homework and projects in one place, whether it's online or in a student calendar. The next thing is if something has a due date, put it on the calendar and create a color coding system to highlight it, like red for deadline. If it's a project, break down and list all of the steps needed to complete the project on a piece of paper or on a post-it note. You have to break the future into pieces to do today because like we said earlier, people with ADHD can only deal with things near in time and they have difficulty planning ahead. So for example, research, buy supplies, poster board, glue, find pictures, write the essay, Make the poster, make a presentation, make presentation notes and practice. You'll wanna list the order in which these steps should be completed and put down which ones require that you are in a specific place like the library or at the store. Now, this is the hard part. You and your child will need to decide how much time each of the steps will take. You probably won't want to add some more time than you think that you'll need until you get to know how long it really takes. You'll want to make sure that those project steps don't conflict with other deadlines that are on your calendar. Provided below is a link to a long-term project planner that you can print out and use each time that you and your child need to plan long-term projects. 
Next, when each of these tasks are completed, in particular for younger children, provide a reward. There are multiple types of planners, both electronic and paper. So if your child likes paper, think about what planner works best for them and ask them for their feedback. Here are some questions that you might wanna ask them. Do you like a small planner so you can carry it with you in your pocket or a big one that you can put in your bag so you won't lose it? Do you like yearly, monthly, weekly, daily, or hourly layouts? And do you wanna track your projects, homework, goals, birthdays, meals, and or your medication? If you can't find the perfect planner already online, sketch out your child's ideal planner and then either find an online site that you can create your custom planner or design it on your computer and then print it out. Some links to those resources are provided below. Another planner system to consider is the bullet journal system. It's a system that allows you to plan for the future, track the past, and it requires some basic supplies. A link to a video with more information about this system is provided below. Some people with ADHD have reported using this type of system successfully, and in some cases, they preferred a different method. Here are some online planner options. It includes Trello, Todoist, My Homework Student Planner, My Study Life School Planner, Student Calendar, Google Calendar, Microsoft Outlook, and iStudies. If your child prefers online calendars, explore these options to see what works for you and your child. It may take some experimentation to find what works for you and your child. What works for one person may not work for another, so keep trying and don't give up. Also, you don't have to go at it alone. If you need some extra help, consult with an ADHD coach, mental health professional, or your child's education team. Also, you can always contact Chad if you need any additional information or resources. One of our information specialists will be glad to assist you. So, are there other approaches that you use? And would you like to share your ideas in the next section of this course with other parents? Or if you're watching this on YouTube, please comment below with your ideas and suggestions and tips. Thank you and I hope you enjoyed this video lesson.